Okay, in this video what I'm going to do is walk us through um, making something in Illustrator rather than just talking about menus and stuff. Um, I'm using CS4 here, so if you've been watching some of the vi other videos on um, using CS2 or CS3, you'll notice that there's some differences. Um, like CS3, we can pop these menus around. I'm using the Essentials workspace, so if you open up um, Illustrator and it looks different than this, uh, you can go to that. Or um, maybe we should pop over to like Photoshop. That's that's kind of nice. It's it's similar in the way it's uh, set up. But any in any case, let me just show you one cool thing here. When it when it's set up with these guys minimized, um, notice that if I hover over them, it it shows us what the the panel is and if I click on it the panel pops out so that's kinda nice but um, let's just switch over to like Photoshop here um, and again if if your panel uh, is a single your tool panel is a single column you can flip it back and forth between these um, as I've mentioned before there's a couple of different areas here are your selection tools and then you've got creation tools um, modification or, or transformation I should really call these tools and today we're going to use these three areas quite a bit plus we'll use the gradient tool a little and also deal with color so I'm going to just make a new document and I'm going to make it for print and just always double check that it's letter size um, Obviously, there are times when you're going to make uh, tabloid size as well, but it's a good habit to just check down here what it's set up to be. And if we want to change this over to inches, that sometimes makes it easier too. All right, opens up, get the standard artboard area. Um, one of the different things about CS4 was this idea of artboards. Um, you can make multiple artboards and you can scale them up and scale them down, but um, the artboard defines um, essentially the page area. And uh, again, by default, CS4 uh, has one artboard, but you can make multiples. This is a fairly new thing with Illustrator. Back in the old days, you only had one page. Okay, so anyway, we've, we've got the document, and what we're going to do is just build a coffee cup. And in fact, I wonder, um, let me just do a, a quick find here. I'm going to go over to the finder and we'll find that JPEG image that we'll be referencing. There it is. Okay, so you can see that um, it's it's it does an okay job looking like a coffee cup. We're not going to try to make something look super realistic, but it's going to have a gradient in here, and we're going to have some wavy lines, some round lines. Um, we're going to in insert some text, so it's going to do a pretty good job, and we're going to do this all um, with just a few tools. So back here in Illustrator, first tool we're going to use, I'm going to click and hold on the rectangle tool and just pop over to the ellipse tool. I'm going to just drag out an ellipse, and it's going to be a little more wide than it is tall. Now, the next thing we're going to do is I'm, I'm going to get the direct selection arrow, or the white arrow. Sometimes I'll just tell you to get the white arrow. Again, the difference between the white arrow and the black arrow is the black arrow allows you to move stuff around on the stage, um, but it doesn't let you manipulate a particular point. Notice that if I try to highlight a point, uh, nothing happens. So I, I get out the white arrow instead, and here's the trick. When I say drag a marquee over a point, start outside the shape. If you try to start inside the shape, you just drag the shape around if it's got a fill. Um, so start outside the shape and drag a marquee over one of the anchor points. And when you do that, you'll notice it highlights. The other anchor points here are what are called hollow points. They're, um, they're showing up because we have the object selected, but they're, they're not selected. Now I'm going to click and just drag this guy down so that we end up with something that looks kind of like a, a pinto bean. And then the next thing we're going to want to do is just build another shape, a little another ellipse on top of this one. And there's a couple ways you can do this. Um, notice that I'm getting these kind of little guides showing up. If you go under view, that's because smart guides are turned on. So if you don't have those turned on, you can you can turn them on. It's another good keyboard shortcut to learn, Command-U. 
I've talked about using um, Command Y before as well for switching between preview and outline. So Command U for um, Smart Guides on or off. The reason why I like them on in this case is I want to align with this edge of the, the first shape. I'm going to just click and drag a shape across. And notice the smart guide pops up and shows the edge of the other side. So this is a real easy way to know that I've got a shape that's the same width. Um, don't worry if it's a little too tall or if it's not perfectly aligned. Um, a lot of times with Illustrator what you have to do is start with making the shape and then just move it into position. So I've got it here and I'm going to just click and drag it down. And if you have trouble getting it aligned, you can hold down Shift or with Smart Guides on, notice it gives us this nice little alignment. It shows it that it's in line as I'm, as I'm bringing it down. So I'm going to just bring it down here. Okay, so now we kind of have the, uh, the idea of a melon, um, the, the maybe half a melon. By the way, if you're seeing, um, if, if you're seeing the background show through, like here, it's because your foreground shape doesn't have a default fill and stroke. The default fill is white, the default stroke is black. If you just click on the sh affected shapes, notice down here it says default fill and stroke. If I just click on it, it fills it white with a stroke of black. Okay, next thing we're going to do. I'm going to scale this down and there's a number of ways that we could do this. I mean, I, I could just grab this and, and scale it down. Um, I don't want to do that though. What I'm going to do is called an option transformation. So I'm going to get out a scale tool and it's just again one of our transform tools. This is rotate, this is scale. And by default you'll notice that there's a, a little pointer here or pivot point that's right in the middle of the shape. That's where the thing's going to scale around. And a lot of people make the mistake when they first try to use this they get their mouse really close or they even try to click and drag on this. Don't do that. Notice that if I click and drag really close it's really hard to control that thing. So instead if you start at about a 45 degree angle from that pivot point and click and drag notice that you have much better control. Dragging up and down scales vertically, dragging left and right scales horizontally. So if you drag you know, from that 45 degree increment, and the further away you are, the slower the transformation will be, you'll find that you have a little bit better control. So I'm going to just drag in a little. Now if I just let go, it just scales the shape in. And that's not what I want. What I want to do is actually make a copy of this shape and scale it down at the same time. So what I'm going to do is click and drag. So I'm just clicking and dragging with the mouse, just kind of normally. The mouse is still down. Now I'm going to hold down Option or Alt on the PC. Notice that the cursor changes there. Um, at this point, it's going to make a copy of this. Now keep your modifier key down. Whenever you're working with modifier keys, just keep your modifier key down. Let go of the, of the mouse button first, and then you can let go of the modifier key. When I do that, notice that I've made a second shape. It's a little smaller than the first, and it's perfectly centered inside of the first shape. It's a lot easier than trying to make a copy and paste it and do all that kind of stuff or draw another shape. So just whenever possible do option transformations. Let me just, I'm going to do a quick aside here. There's all kinds of op option transformations you can make and I talk about this in I think the Shape Tricks movie. Um, if I have a rectangle here and I click and drag it, I can hold down option and it makes a copy. And then if I press Command D or Control D on the PC, it repeats that transformation so I can build a whole bunch and we're going to do that as part of uh, what we're building today. So okay, so we've we've built this basically with three um, ovals so far. Now we need to paint this interior and we're going to paint it um, kind of that gradient color. So to do that there's there's a couple of ways that we can go. We could come in and, and apply a gradient um, there's swatches in here and I want to click on one of these swatches. Notice that there's some default gradients and you could actually just pick the radial gradient. We'll start with that. You can pick that out and, and that starts us. Now that being said, you can modify it. If I click on the little gradient tool here, notice that it says radial. If I choose linear, what it does is it goes from one edge to the other edge. 
And while we're at it, how do you apply color? So radial, it radiates out from one to the other. Well, what it's doing is it's, it's radiating out from the center point, and that's white, and then the outer point is black. Um, it's, it's mid, this little diamond here determines its mid-tone point. So if I squeeze it towards white, notice that the thing gets um, smaller, and if I drag it towards black, it gets bigger. I'm just going to put it right back around 50%. If I want to change the color of a gradient, there's a couple of ways I can do this. I can drag a swatch down and drop it on top of a color, and it'll change that color. I can drag and drop a swatch just on the gradient bar, and it adds a color. If I don't want a color, I can click and drag that off of the bar. It removes it. And notice since this shape is highlighted while I'm doing this, it just keeps modifying the shape. Um, we can pick a color to choose from, so if I highlight this, notice that there's a little black triangle on top of this. I can come in and pick a different color in there, and that affects the gradient as well. So that's how you color a gradient. Um, I'm just going to do boring old black and white. There's also transformations I can do. If I come over to the tool palette, notice there's a gradient tool here. And there's, there's things you can do. You can affect this. If I pull this out, I can make the gradient um, larger or smaller so that it's tighter. Um, if I come up along the top, I can affect the gradient so it's no longer a perfect circle. It's now kind of radiating out in an oval instead. So there's, there's all kinds of fun things you can do. Um, again, we can scale the whole gradient up or down. And I think, yeah, notice that you can also um, adjust where the colors are on the gradient and, and move the little midpoint around and, and all of that stuff. So you can affect this all in here. This was new with, I think, CS4. So you won't find this kind of functionality in CS3 if you're using CS3. I can also drag this thing around and, and affect where the gradient starts and stops. Notice that it's compressed on this side. So anyway, um, some fun things, but I'm just going to go back and, and use just that default gradient. So if I want to set it back to its default, there it is in the swatches. I'll just use the, the plain gradient here, and it's pretty close anyway. Um, okay, so now we have this radiating out from a center point. If we want it to um, radiate out a little bit more, which I think I do, that looks awfully you know, pointed there. Um, let's just make this just a little larger. Okay, good. Um, okay, I'm going to save this before too much goes on here. Uh, by the way, whenever you save a, a Illustrator file, make sure create PDF compatible files checked. If that is, what's great about this is if you take this to print somewhere and they don't have Illustrator, which is often the case, they can still open this file in Acrobat. So they could just have Acrobat Reader if they right click on the file or control click on the file and choose open with and they choose Acrobat, it'll open up in print as long as this is checked. Your file size is doubled because it makes a PDF file as well as the, the normal file, but I think it's well worth it. Okay, so next thing we need to do, we need to make the little crescent on the, on the sides of the, the coffee cup. It's real easy. If we had to draw those little crescents out, um, it would be more of a pain in the neck. So what I'm going to do is just come back, get the ellipse tool again, and I'm going to just drag out a circle or an oval. And I'm going to give it the default fill and stroke. And I'm just going to kind of align it here. Notice that it automatically wants to snap to the center point of the larger oval, which is great. And then I'm going to, let's zoom in here a little bit so I can see what I'm doing. I'm going to drag this to the right, and I'm going to hold down Option. And if, I, if I'm not getting the nice little Smart Guide control, which I am, I could hold down Shift. So the first thing I'm doing is I'm just dragging with the mouse. Got the mouse button held down. Hold down Option, notice the cursor changes, and then Shift will keep it constrained. Okay, so we get two ovals, big deal. Now what we're going to use is one of the coolest tools available with Illustrator. I'm going to hold down Shift, and I'm going to click on this background oval so that they're both selected. I'm going to go under Window, 
slide down and choose Pathfinder. Pathfinder um, came out with Illustrator 5 and it was just this it might have been Illustrator 6 but anyway it was just this great tool before Pathfinder whenever you needed to make a complex shape you use the pen and the pen is an awesome tool and I'm going to talk about it a lot but many times like all I want to do is make a crescent here many times you can do that just by taking two simple shapes and either combining them together that's what the first one is unite or use the front shape to cook to cut out the background shape I always call that a cookie cutter or there's intersection so where they intersect here leaves that or there's exclusions where there's an intersection that's left out um, which is cool when you have lettering overlapping for example but right now I'm just going to want to chop out the front or use the front to chop out part of the back do that and bingo easy I've, I've got this nice little crescent moon all ready to go now I need to make another copy of it on the other side now I could option drag it and rotate it over but I want to introduce another tool because I think it's a lot faster if you go under the rotate tool so I'm just clicking and holding and choose reflect notice again there's a pivot point all your transformation tools you'll see a pivot point up here now if I click and drag this it pivots around this center which isn't very helpful and reflect tool with this crescent I could probably just use the um, just go ahead and, and use the rotate tool since the top and the bottom of the crescent are pretty symmetrical it's not that big of a deal um, but what reflect does is it mirrors this copy so as I as I bring this over on the other side I'm, it's just going to be a, an opposite um, again with the crescent you probably wouldn't notice it much but whenever you need to mirror something that's that's what the reflect tool is for so what I need to do is I need to move this pivot point and put it right in the middle of the larger oval now it's kinda hard to see that in preview mode so I'm gonna go under view and choose outline and notice outline conveniently shows us this nice little center point and I'm gonna just click and let go that's all I did I didn't click and drag I didn't do anything I, right now my mouse button is up I'm not holding it or anything um, notice it repositions the pivot point so it's now over this location now again when you're doing transformations move away from the object as I click and drag this notice that it brings it around to the other side if you hold down shift it constrains it so it constrains it in uh, in this case 90 degree in increments and again option to make a copy I'm gonna let go of the mouse key before I let go of the modifier keys remember just do that and it makes your life easy okay now I'm gonna go back to preview command Y or control Y there you go so now we have got that little guy um, into the into the mix next thing we need to do is a little wavy um, steam so I'm gonna just quick save this command s for steam I'm just gonna use a pencil and I'm gonna make one side of this so I'm gonna just click and drag out kind of an S shape And there's some cool stuff if you ever fiddle around with the pencil tool there's a smooth tool so I can I can come over the pencil here and it will take out some of the anchor points and try to smooth it out um, there's a modify tool on the pencil so if I get close to an existing line notice that right now it has a little X by it that means I'm gonna make a new line but if I get close to an existing selected line that X goes away and I don't know yeah it doesn't it's only with selected lines so as I get close to this line what I can do now is click and drag and it modifies now you might say well wait a minute it redid it the the way the pencil operates is if you have more than a 90 degree turn on it it's going to assume that you want to redraw that line so if I just continue this without that sharp 90 degree turn it appends the original line okay but anyway I'm, I'm digressing I want to just make this little shape so by the way I just press delete to get rid of those extra shapes now I made this shape what I want to do is duplicate this shape so I'm going to get out the black arrow so I'm selecting the whole shape I'm just going to click and drag this to the right and I'm going to offset it a little bit so I'm going to drag it up a little as well hold down option and it makes a copy now if I try to fill these 
you're going to get something that looks really wacky, and this is what people hate about Illustrator. If I fill it, I get these little slashes happening here. Um, that's because when you fill an open shape, these are open shapes, um, it fills from the two open points. It just draws a straight line between them and fills in white. So when I first started using Illustrator, it was very confusing to me because I couldn't figure out why it was doing this. So what we really need to do is we need to have that fill go inside of this steam shape rather than doing this crazy stuff. To do that, I'm going to get the white arrow. I'm going to click and drag a marquee over just the top two points. So don't select any of the other points. So notice the other points just show up as white. So with just those two top points selected, I'm going to go under Object, slide down to Path, and just choose Join. When you do that, let me zoom in here. What Illustrator does is it makes a little um, segment just between those two shapes. Now, I'm going to undo this and show you another one. If you hold down com Command J is join. If you hold down Command Option Shift J, it averages them to one location and then joins them together. Now, we don't want that, but I just wanted to show you that's kind of the difference. So if you ever need, if you have two open shapes and you need them to go to one spot and join together, press Command Option J, um, I'm sorry, Command Option Shift J, or if you're on the PC, that would be Control Alt Shift J. Okay, so I'm going to just again select just the two points here, Command J. And by the way, this lets me talk about something that you might see in the stroke panel, this thing called miter limit. I'm sure you're kind of wondering about that. I pop that open. Notice that the miter limit is here at four. What the miter limit does is it it determines whether this is going to have an angle, a little point on it, or it's going to be kind of a, a, a bevel. If I crank this up a bit at some point, there you can see it makes a sharp point instead. So in some cases when you're designing, you might want to have a miter limit on your, your you might want to raise the miter limit just so that you get some sharp points, or lower it so that you go back to having just kind of this, this blunt edge. Um, again, I can hide this little panel just by clicking the, the double arrows. Okay, so we've made the steam. And now what I want to do is I just want to have two copies of the steam. Um, you might say, well, how come you're not joining the bottom? I could join the bottom. The key thing is, is that it's still an open path, but now it's filling between these two open points. And that's not as distracting. And in fact, since it's steam coming out of the coffee for me, I don't mind having no stroke there. It kind of joins it with the coffee, but it's up to you. First of all, what I'm going to do is position it so that it's a little lower down. And what I want to have is three equal little shapes of steam coming up. So to do this, notice that I've got my white arrow. You could use the black arrow too. If you click on the fill area with the white arrow, it treats it just like the black arrow. So often I just use the white arrow for all of my work because then I can also select parts of a shape or I can select the entire shape. All right, anyway, we've got it filled. I'm going to just drag it over to the right. I'm going to hold down shift. Shift keeps it nice and, you know, nice and straight as it comes across. I'm going to just kind of position it right over the center there. Hold down option to make the duplicate. Notice that my cursor changes. Let go. Um, again, let go of the mouse key first, and I get a copy of Steam. Now I'm going to press Command-D one more time, and I get a third little copy of Steam. All right, so, so far so good. I'm going to save the document. What about the handle? The handle um, is pretty easy. It's actually just a variation of what we did here. Just going to drag out an ellipse. This time it's a little taller than it is wide. I'm going to get out the scale tool. Notice the pivot points in the middle. Click and drag into the middle. I'm just going to drag it down until I have something that looks kind of like a handle. Hold down Option to make the copy. And then I'm going to make a copy of this and I'm going to just offset it a little bit. And you're going to go, well, why is he doing this? Don't worry, I'll, I'll explain in a second. So I'm just dragging it up and to the right a little and holding down Option to make a copy. What I want to do here is I want to fill this black and not have a stroke. Easy way to do this is there's ni this nice little reverse arrow here, swaps the fill and stroke, 
So that fills it black, strokes it white. To remove the white stroke, I click on the stroke, and I just click the little red slash, and that gets rid of the stroke. So now I just have an object with a fill. Now, what I need to do is it needs to be actually behind this shape. And you'll see here in a minute why. So you could do this a couple ways. As I talked about in class, you can go under a range and you could just choose send backward. And that's that's handy since it only needs to go back one. Um, or the other trick that I like is edit and choose cut and you just select the object you want it to go in front of or behind and then just choose edit paste in back or paste in front it keeps its position on the page the same it just changes its layer order the reason I like that one instead and it's just command X to cut and command B for back or command F for front or control for all of those if you're on a PC the reason I like that is maybe you need to move a shape 200 paces back um, in the layer order and doing send to back 200 times gets really tedious so it's a lot easier just command X command you know click on the shape you need it behind command B okay so anyway we've got it set here it still doesn't look kind of like the the coffee cup you saw because we need to rotate it so I'm just gonna select this whole group and this is a good time to talk about groups I'm gonna go under object command G to group what a group does is if I click on one object, it just selects all the objects. Now, I'm going to assume that you don't have the bounding box turned on. Um, if you have the bounding box, notice that if you hover around a corner, you can get a rotation angle here, and it just rotates around its center point. Um, what I wanted to do is show you the rotate tool though. The thing I like about the rotate tool is notice it has a pivot point. If I want to move that pivot point and adjust its rotation in a different way, you get a little bit more control and you can also option rotate that way. So if I drag this and hold down option, I can make a copy. Um, so anyway, it's, it's up to you, but um, don't forget that you can do those transformations and option transformations. So anyway, I just want to rotate this guy so that it's slightly at an angle. And I'm rotating all of them. Now you might notice this little line here. When I click away, you won't see that line. So now it looks like it has a little shadow on the handle. I'm going to drag this over into position. Now since I drew it last, it is in front of the other shapes. So I just need to go under Object, Arrange, and I could just send this all the way to the back, and that takes care of it might do a little bit more adjustment. If I want to select all the shapes, I can either drag a marquee across or press Command A. And notice I could either scale these down just with the bounding box. If you hold down Shift, it's, it maintains its aspect ratio. Or you could use the scale tool. doesn't matter. So we've got this set up. Last thing we need to do is put in the text that says coffee just going to get the type tool. What I want to do is I kind of just going to eyeball this. I'm going to just put it right down underneath the center of the cup. Type in coffee in all caps with an exclamation point. Now it looks really goofy here. Notice that if I click on it with a black arrow it shows that it's Myriad Pro up in the options bar 12 point. I want to pick a serif typeface, so let's pop this open and come down and just I'll just choose times. Um, and I want it to be uh, bold, so I wonder if do we need to... I'm going to open up the character palette here. Go under window, over to type, and I'm just going to open up character. Notice that it says regular, I can choose bold from here. So that changes its style. Now, you could scale it up. I mean, we could just pop this open and choose 72. And that actually looks pretty good. But if you wanted it to be bigger or smaller, there's a couple of other tricks. With, with it selected, if I press um, Command-Shift and I do greater than or less than, I can scale it up and it goes in two-point increments. If I do Command-Option-Shift, it pops up in 10-point increments. So this is a real fast way to scale. And you can do that with the type if you 
drag over it and select it as well. This just does all the point type. Now right now it's positioned over, it's left aligned essentially. This is called point type. Point type aligns to the point where you clicked. If I come over here and I just click the align center button, now it's underneath the shape. There we go. Last thing I'll do is put my name on it, scale that down, and I could also scale it down just using the bounding box here. Just click and drag it down. Holding down shift again constrains it. Notice when I scale it down it now shows the new point value. Put it in position and there we're done. Um, we've, we've now built a coffee cup. I hope that this video is helpful for you. It should walk you through the complete exercise in Illustrator for drawing a coffee cup. And I, I think it introduces you to this idea that you can use, I mean, we basically just used, what, the pencil tool, a whole lot of the ellipse. Um, we joined some stuff. We did some gradients. We did a lot of option transformations. And we put in just a little type. And we made something that looked um, you know, looks fairly, uh, fairly good. So let me know if you have any questions. Thanks.